I just bought this $190,000 diamond in the rough property here in Texas. And we're going to completely demolish it and in its place, construct a $1 million DIY dream home. Phase one of the dream home build is to build a two-story garage with a full apartment upstairs that I'll be staying in while we construct the dream home. But while we're constructing that two-story apartment, I've gotta live inside of this place. Now this house has a ton of problems from the roaches and the termites to the black mold growing on the ceiling. But our very first priority is to see if we can build a functional and comfortable bathroom because this house doesn't have one. We know we're gonna drive a bulldozer through this house in about six months. So the challenge is to build a bathroom nice enough to enjoy, but cheap enough to throw away. Right. How much you're willing to sink into this bathroom, but no one is gonna end up in the dumpster. I would say I'm willing to lose a thousand bucks for a nice bathroom. I'm gonna be in here every day. Yep. So I'm gonna say a thousand bucks. Thousand bucks, I can pay up, bud. There you go, thousand bucks. Twenties, really? Thanks for clothes today, man. Now there is a ton of things wrong with this bathroom. I would even go so far to say there is nothing right with this bathroom. Number one in our top 10 list of what's wrong with this bathroom is the floor plan. On this side of the hallway, we have the shower room. And on this side of the hallway in this closet is the toilet. So how are we gonna fix that problem? We're simply gonna take this door, build a little wall right here, and this will be the door into the bathroom and it'll all be connected. Yeah, left for bathroom or right for shower. There you go. We can even put a little sign right here. <laughs> there you go. The second biggest problem we have is this tile shower. It's nice and big, but this has got to be one of the worst tile jobs I've ever seen in my whole life. And I don't even know where to start with this shower, so let's start where my feet are. It feels like I'm standing on tile that's been laid over a dirt road. Check this out. I got a big hump here, and then there's a big rut, and then it dives down again over here in the corner. Look at this section right here. It's all going down, and these are peaked right here. This is crazy. Can't wait to see what they used as an underlayment. And look right here. They put these bullnose tiles on this corner because it's so sharp. I guess that's to try to keep yourself from getting cut. Let's keep on going. Look up here in these corners. This looks like maybe they used thin set right here. And I don't know, that could be grout, that could be thin set, but it is a different color. And they even put grout or thin set right here. Nothing straight, nothing square, nothing's parallel. I'm just freaking out just standing in here, Jordan. We gotta rip this down as soon as we can. And another problem we have with this bathroom, there are no amenities. There's no storage, nowhere to hang anything. We do have this grab bar way up here. I guess you could put a towel on that. I guess. Yeah, but look at this switch. You got a double gang box. Look how we notched the door casing. That's pretty nice. Drywall tape right there. For some reason, it's ground fault all the way against the wall. And nothing lines up here. You know how we like to line everything up, but I get it on this house. Maybe they weren't too picky about that. But those are all the kind of things we want to fix and make this bathroom look great. So let's stop wasting time, boys. Grab some sledgehammers and start smashing some walls. This corner will not come out, and that's not a torque screw. Looks like a hex head bolt. What? Are we surprised? No. No. All right, we're trying to be a little careful with this door because it's gonna be our new bathroom door about right there, connecting the toilet and the shower. But you know what? Who's tired of being careful? Jordan, this is your house. You get first swing, bud. I got this. Go. Why don't, yeah. you, why don't you do the same thing, but just go right in the middle of that wall. Go and get the sledge, bust the tile through on the back side, cut the right. top plate, cut the bottom plate, and we can haul that out in two pieces. Yeah. Much smarter. Right. Much smarter. I got that. All right, we got a triple top plate, two by fours. So I got it exposed on both sides. We're gonna cut through those. Got a little block right here, gonna cut through that. We'll take this piece down, haul the dumpster. This piece down, haul the dumpster. We just got the three walls behind me.
Tear it out. Got me three. Nice. All right, guys, all the tile has been removed from the walls. It's in the dumpster. And our next step is to tackle this floor and unravel the mystery of what's underneath this tile. First step, we're going to remove this sill plate. It's actually bolted down with three bolts. Looks like 9 16 to me. Let's see if I still got the touch, Jordan, just by looking at a bolt, knowing what size it is. Nice. Woo, look at that. We're going to have to keep those. Yeah. All right, gang. Got a lot going on right here. I got a huge mortar bed, and it looks like there's two of them. See the old color down here, and then the white one on top of that? But look what's going on. Look how crazy that is. Look how uneven it is. It doesn't make sense for any type of mortar bed that I've ever seen. And actually under this, that's a mortar bed also. Look right here, see this shape? To me, that's the outline of an old cast iron tub, and then they brought the mortar bed up to it. But this is six feet wide. Did they have six foot wide cast iron tubs back in the day? I don't know. So I think we're just gonna leave all that. And our focus right now is to remove this massive mortar bed. So as you can see, I got out the big old Bosch demo hammer right here. We're just gonna start chipping away, throw it in the dumpster and see what we find under here and try to get a game plan on how we're gonna put this bathroom back together. All right, guys, remember this old corner right here where they tile around the outside of that old wall? That wall was here just hiding this wire. So we're gonna get rid of the wall and move that wire to be much cleaner for us. But let me show you how we get rid of this stud without moving that wire. We cut it off. So they drill the hole at an angle, but you get the point of what I'm trying to do. Let's chip it away and there we go. All right, this corner looks a lot cleaner without that little wall there. It's going to be much easier to tile. We're just simply going to put a notch here, tuck that wire in, cover it with a nail plate. We'll be good to go there. Speaking of wiring, come check this out. We got these two wires coming out of the box, and this is the same two wires right here. But they wrapped it around this stud and stuck it right in between there. There's like no slack. Good thing this is just temporary, but last thing I want to point out is this wall not attached to anything we'll do the best we can but again it's all temporary but before we start rebuilding this bathroom we need some materials so why don't we head to the store get our list out and see how far this takes us all right guys we're at foreign decor but we need everything from our thin set to our tile let's see if we can find what we need and stay under budget We just came out of floor and decor. I think we did pretty good. We spent a total of $556.56, bringing us down to right above $400. We'll have it in the bottom of the screen for you. We got a lot of stuff though. We got every almost everything we need to build the shower. Now we just kind of need some trim details. Floor and decor doesn't have the stuff we need, so we're gonna head down the street to Home Depot and see what we can get for about 400 bucks. Let's go. All right guys, we just came out of Home Depot. We went a little bit over budget, but that's gonna be all right because we're gonna strap everything down with our Rhino Made in the USA straps. Love these things. Auto retract right here. Check it out. Good. This guy over here, he needs a pair of those. All right guys, we're here at Lowe's. There's actually only one thing here that we need because it's the cheapest of this specific item that we found in the entire city. So let's head in there and just grab it. Should be a quick stop. All right gang, we are back from the store. Yes, we went over budget by about $100, but here's why. Three main reasons. Number one, we looked high and low for a cheaper alternative to the Schluter flanged shower drain and we could not find one. Went to three different stores, looked online, this is all we could find. So that's about 125 bucks, right, for this and the grate. So if you know of a cheaper alternative, let us know in the comments below and that's really gonna help everybody out. And we also had to buy eight 
eight foot two by fours at about $47 total because we're moving that doorway and we have to frame around it. Normally in a bathroom remodel, hopefully you're not doing the kind of framing we are, so you're gonna save that money as well. And on that same note, because we're adding a new doorway here, we gotta cover the framing with drywall. So we bought four sheets of drywall, not just any drywall, all they had was green board. They were out of the regular stuff, if you can believe it. And we also had to buy some corner beads, but remember, on a regular bathroom remodel, you're not gonna need all this, so you're gonna save about $100 right there. So now that all the materials are on site, let's get in that bathroom and start building the shower. Very first step I want to do is remove this old drain. When I look down there, there's like three or four sections of pipe above the P-trap. There's a lot going on down there. If I make the cut in the wrong spot, I won't be able to glue on my coupling. So we're going to make a cut high, remove this part of the flange, then we'll be able to see where our couplings are and make the proper cut. And now you can see exactly what we're talking about by all the couplings down there, but we lucked out. If you can see this one right here, that's gonna work to our advantage. We're gonna cut this pipe again, get rid of this little ABS ring, and up here is our Schluter flange. We're gonna have this part of the flange meet that coupling down there as tight as we can make it, and it's gonna work out perfect. And that means we don't need all this, so we can return it for what, $8, George? Yep. Cool, I just saved you eight bucks, boy. This Schluter drain has a wide base here, so we've got to make our hole bigger in the floor so this will fit. Now that we have our hole cut, we're going to vacuum this up, put some tar paper down, glue our flange in, and we're ready for our next step. All right, everybody, the shower is looking a whole lot better. We reused the insulation we pulled out of there, stuck it back in the wall. Remember, everything we're doing right now is going to be ripped out in six months. On this wall over here on my right, we had to rip these half inch thick shims because we got plywood on this wall and we had to plane out here so that our backer board is completely flush. Backer board is going to be flush with the drywall and the tile will come just over it right here where my hand is. Over here in this other corner, we use the rest of that two by four for this corner block. Use some one by fours we found on the job site for this section of that corner. Made a notch for our wire, so we are good to go, ready for backboard. board is up and this thing looks so much better already and we did this in about what Jordan 30 minutes we, we were flying so fast I was cutting you guys were hanging one of the ways we're trying to save Jordan a little money is by building our own curb we're gonna use these two two by fours from this old wall behind me we're gonna wrap it in backer board and it's gonna work great for his temporary shower cool man our DIY curb is done wrap it in backer board and it's gonna look perfect it's even got a little pitch to the inside just like we planned it and our next step actually is to put drywall up here now i'm six foot tall we're using 12 by 24 inch tile we're just going to go six full courses it's probably going to end about right here so we bring our drywall down the tile is going to cover the seam shower head up here this will never get wet, but usually we bring our backer board all the way up, tile to the ceiling. We just don't need to do all that right now for this shower because we're tearing it down. So we're going to do one, two, three sheets of drywall. And we're going to wrap this little header right here. It's going to look great. Then we're going to come over here behind Jordan. We took down the door. We're going to put drywall and corner bead here and try to flush this out and make this look nice. All the drywall is up, looks great. We use some 20 minute hot mud to fill in the big holes. We're gonna come back tomorrow and start taping all the drywall. It's gonna look great. But in the meantime, today we wanna to get our pre-slope in so we can tile this floor tomorrow. Now we've got a lot of videos on how to do this, but this is not gonna be one of them. This is gonna be a quick remodel, right? We would typically put wire lath here because we're on a wood subfloor to strengthen our dry pack. But we're gonna skip it because remember, we're gonna drive a bulldozer through this place. So Rad's out there mixing up our floor mud, and after that, we're gonna start sloping it in. All right, guys, our 
shower pan is done, and our next step is to do the waterproofing and install our floor tile. But we gotta come clean with you. I have a little bit of curdy left from a previous project, and I'm gonna waterproof the floor with that. Two pieces of curdy down in the shower. We ran them this way, left them up the wall over here, and just wrapped it around the curb for one tight waterproof system. And we actually do have some leftover curdy band. And if you've ever purchased Sluter products, you know how valuable this stuff is. So we're going to put a piece right here. You see, I'm still working it on the right hand side. And when we bought the drain, we winced a little bit at the price. But remember, it comes with, I think, four inside corners and a couple of outside corners. So we're actually going to throw one of these over there. If we weren't videoing this, we probably wouldn't even put that in there just to save some time and money. Because remember, we're bulldozing this in about six months. It is the right thing to do, though. It is the right thing to do. Absolutely. All right, not the prettiest cut of my career, but when that bulldozer goes through here, it's not going to matter. All right, gang, as you can see on the shower floor, we've put all our hex tile down. Well, not all of it. I have one more box right here, but we've got two huge problems right off the bat. Number one, we're short like four tile. So that means a trip to the store. But probably the bigger problem is we left our old cobalt wet saw in Louisiana. So we were hoping to cut these with a snap cutter. So we bought one this morning, a little cheap one, thinking it would get us through this job. It won't even touch these things. So we got to run back to the store, get more tile. We're going to return the little snap cutter and buy a cheap little wet saw to finish this shower. All right, gang, we're back from the store, got more tile, and we also picked up a very inexpensive tabletop tile saw. Got a very inexpensive blade on it, and it makes a pretty rough cut, but it's going to be okay because everybody say it with me. It's, it's temporary. temporary. Let's tile the shower. All right, everybody, we want to get this video out as soon as we can. So our goal is to tile the whole shower in one day, the floor, the walls, and the curb. And this is how we're going to do it. As you can see, I've already made two courses all the way around on the floor. And we're going to stop right there on the floor. I guess we a working spot in the middle. And now we can start on the walls. Look how cool that's going to look. Full tile right here, all the way up, six courses. Once the walls are all done, get over here where my buckets are, finish the floor, finish the curb. Head outside and we're done. But we didn't build this shower, Dad, so it's not perfectly square. How do you know that all those hexagon tiles are gonna fit nice and snug in the shower? Great question. The last thing we want is to get to this last row and they don't fit, right? And you're out there trimming them. That's gonna look terrible. So what I did, I measured from this point right there to this point on that tile. It was 52 and a quarter. Came over here on my right by the curve. And actually I was a little long. I was at 52 and a half. So I just pulled this whole course in so now point to point on all these is hit two and a quarter. Shouldn't have any problems. Perfect. All right, gang, got the first row on the back wall and we totally lucked out on the layout. Three full tiles covers wall to wall, no cuts. And we're just gonna go 0% offset. We're just gonna stack them. So there will be no cuts on this wall. We'll have six times three, 18 full tile. Let's get it done. All right guys, two more tiles for the shower wall. Now we got a little situation here. We didn't frame this building. It was framed about World War II, right? So these walls are not plumb. So we have a pretty big gap here. What we're doing to fix that, we put a couple of dollops there. I'm gonna place this tile, push it into those dollops, and then I'm pushing it that way into the gap, just like that. Beautiful. And again, we wouldn't normally do this. Right, this dollops just... are bad in right, tiles. Right, right, right. It's only temporary. It's only temporary. <laughs> it's only temporary. It's only temporary. <laughs> Officially passing my notch trowel off to one of you guys. There we go, we have a shower for Jordan. All we have left to do is to grout it, install the drain, it's ready to go. Now it was kind of hard for us to get in the mindset 
of doing something temporary. So we skip some of the little details that we normally do, but this is gonna work great for you, bud, for six months or so while we build your house and you can finally take a shower in your new bathroom. What do you think? I think it looks really awesome and it's right on the line of being too nice where I don't wanna rip it out. So right. I think we walked it perfectly. We did. Our next step right now is to keep working on the drywall because Jordan actually wants to paint this thing tomorrow. And we don't even have a wall right here. So we're gonna frame this wall, hang a couple sheets of drywall for the new doorway, and we'll be ready to go. Here's our sill plate for the new doorway wall. We've got it notched right here, so it's square to this wall. It's gonna be the only square corner in your house, Jordan. Nice. And we got the laser on it, so we can plumb straight up for the top plate. It's gonna be the only plumb wall in your house. You ready for that? Yeah. All right, so let's make our mark here on the ceiling, get our top plate cut, and we're ready to run some studs. All right, gang, making great headway on our wall. I'm about to screw the sill plate into the subfloor. Like I said, we can make one sill plate and then I'm gonna anchor it here and here. If I don't, this little piece is just gonna flop around as we open and close the door. We don't want that to happen. And I'm going right to the grab line. Here we go. Now we have a new bathroom door right here in our hallway. And even though we added a doorway in this hall, it doesn't feel like it's more compact, more cluttered. It feels like it's more organized now because we have one room that's completely our bathroom. And don't worry about it. We're gonna remove this door right here to the toilet room. This door remains into the room behind me. And of course, we're gonna have a brand new door right there opening out to Jordan. It's gonna be great. And so, you know what's next, gang? Tape and mud. All right guys, while dad's out there finishing the drywall, I'm gonna be in here grouting it. We've got a pre-mixed silver grayish grout, all one color, should be easy. The best part about one grout color is I can start on the top and anything that falls, I can just use it on the floor. step is to finally throw some paint on the wall. So I'm going to grab my sander, give the new drywall work, a light sanding, and I might as well go over this old stuff, knock off some of these nibs. That's going to make the overall paint job look just a little bit better. Let's start sanding and painting this bathroom. This other room and I prepped the new bathroom door. I just put the casing on it. It's a hollow core door. We're not even gonna put wedges on it. We're just gonna tip it up into place, square it up, nail these to the jacks and we'll be good to go. And with the addition of this door, we have the removal of another. Might need a hammer. There we go. All right, our brand new door is working great. That was a great solution to the problem on this bathroom. The primer is dry. Our next step is to put up one coat of color. While that dries, we're gonna install the vanity, put up our base and our case, all our fixtures, cover plates. Let's get this thing finished.
All right, bud, you ready to show them the quickest bathroom we've ever done? And the cheapest bathroom. Stud pack on the cheap. Walmart stud pack. The quickest bathroom we've ever done. But it's still pretty nice. It's absolutely very nice. But not nice enough to where I don't want to drive a bulldozer through it. You will drive a bulldozer through it. But I can still enjoy a shower after a long day's work building the stud pack house. Absolutely. I'm ready. ready to show them? Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> standing in the new updated bathroom. New's a strong word, let's not use the word new. It's updated, it's tolerable. That's what I keep saying, right? It's tolerable. And we're gonna take a walk through, show you guys what we did, how it looks, and why we made some of the decisions that we did. So let's start right here with my personal favorite part of this entire bathroom, the shower. Now personally, I think the shower came out absolutely great. We were shopping for clearance tile, and we didn't really have any control over what that tile was going to be. It could have been yellow, it could have been red, it could have been any color out there. But as luck would have it, the clearance tile that was available was this Sentinel Gray tile from Floor and Decor, and I love the way it looks. And then down here, we've got this black hexagon tile that was only like $1.39 per, uh, per tile, which is absolutely awesome. We used the same color of grout all the way through. We used that pre-mixed grout and it just looks stunning. I mean, great. we decided to reuse the valve right here. Uh, silicone that a little bit just for uh, just for an added touch, an added finished touch. Reuse the valves. I might replace these later on, but they're gonna do for right now. Now let's talk about this section for a little bit. This is where I'm gonna be spending a lot of the time doing my hair, brushing my teeth, applying the deodorant, stuff like that. And this vanity right here ate up a lot of our budget, coming in at $200. There were a couple of options here. Obviously, keeping the first one was an option, but it was rotted, so we decided to throw it away. If you guys are renovating a bathroom, you can probably keep your existing vanity. That's going to save you a ton of money. We could have saved $200 on this, and it would have gone a long way, but hey. We decided to go with a 30-inch because in the past, I've lived in places that had no countertop space, a pedestal sink stuff like that, and it drove me absolutely crazy. So I knew that I wanted at least a little countertop space. And as far as countertop space is concerned, that's not a lot, but it's enough to get me by for six months. And I'm sure when we demo this, we're probably gonna keep this or yeah, resell it. Sell it. Yeah. It's pretty nice. And sell it, the mirror, the light, yep. I mean, yeah, this mirror we got at Walmart for like $17, and it came out great, it's gonna do the job. And then this light right here, it was actually oiled bronze. It was that rubbed oil bronze finish that everybody knows. It's that brown color. And that doesn't match with anything in this house. So we actually spray painted it black and you would never know, it looks awesome. And we bought this thing for around $30. So to buy it for $30, paint it black, it's gonna do just fine. And I think this whole vanity area looks uh, really good, to be honest. A funny little detail here is that we wanted the vanity level. So there's totally like space right here. Uh, we just screwed it to the wall and it's very strong, but there's just space right there. It's kind of silly. And then of course down here, we've got the, a lot of space down there. It's all plumbed up. Dad plumbed it up and it looks great and it functions really good. Where's the water, dude? Um, <laughs> the water heater burst when, right. when it froze here. So we'll be addressing that in a later video. But you know what gets me about the whole bathroom? What's that? It's clean, right? Everything's mm. clean. Yes. And after a hard day on the job, build the stud pack house, you're gonna to wanna to come in here to a clean bathroom to get cleaned up. Yeah. Not a nasty old cruddy bathroom. That's true. The nasty crud is on the ground, actually. If you look down here on the ground, Rad, it's, I mean, this floor is actually disgusting. I mean, every single grout joint, there's dirt and grime, and it's, it's pretty gross, I'm not gonna lie. If we had not spent $200 on this vanity, we probably would have uh, splurged for some new flooring. I think yeah. some new flooring really would have set this bathroom off. But I'm just gonna get a big um, bath mat and yep. it's totally gonna be cool. It'll be fine. Now this hallway section came out great. Remember, we had a door here, the door behind me, and a door to the left of me into the toilet area. So we took this door down, relocated it here, and honestly, it looks like it's been here with the whole house the whole time. That's because right. Because we didn't fill any holes, we didn't call, we didn't worry about it. And sometimes <laughs> that's really hard when you're doing this level of work to shift and do this level of work. Right. It's tough for me personally to do that. This came out great. I love the way it works. You can totally close this one, 
lock yourself in here. It's gonna be it's gonna be great. And check out our poop closet, gang. It actually looks pretty good. I threw a coat of paint on the walls and it, it kind of hid all of the pencil marks and stuff. But we wiped the toilet down, we uh, caulked the baseboard, gave it a new coat of paint like I said, and these shelves were actually in the living room. I reused them, I just brought them in here. Um, we leveled them and I kind of like it. It's a little rustic mm -hmm. and <laughs> it's gonna do just fine. One of the things that I was really impressed with while we were working on this bathroom was this PPG Multi-Pro, AKA apartment paint. And that's because it's exactly what it sounds like. People just give it the landlord special, slather it on everything. But I was really impressed with this stuff. For a budget paint, I think it came out really good. Probably need a couple coats. We only had time to do one because we got to get this video out. But if you guys are scared to buy a budget paint, I think you'll be pretty pleased with the results. Bucket brigade coming through. What's that for? I want to test this shower pan. Man. Oh. I spent a lot of time building this thing. I want to make sure it drains well since we don't even have running water in here. That's yet. right. Are you ready? Here All right, up. here we go. About almost five gallons. Fill her up. Nice. All right, let's see. All right, we got the vortex. Our, our goal is no puddles, right? Right, no puddles. Everything slopes towards the drain. That's right. Looking pretty good. Yeah, Looking it's draining good. real good. Nice. It looks like it's draining nice and even. Nice, man. Great job, everybody. Yeah, where'd you learn how to slope in a shower like that? I learned it on YouTube, dude. Nice. All right, Jordan, on your bathroom remodel, we spent $1,153.07 on material only, okay. right? And of course, that was a little higher than we thought, but right. we did have to buy a bunch of two by fours. That's right. We bought 12 and we used 12. It's always a little higher yeah. than you think it's gonna be. We bought four sheets of drywall, used every bit of it, but it came out great. That's right. Yeah, yeah and every bathroom's gonna be different, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, most of the time, you could probably reuse your old vanity unless right. it's absolutely trash. Right, and the mirrors and the lights. Yeah. And they're not going to be doing framing work or drywall work, so that's going to bump the cost up as well, or bump it down rather. Of course. It's coming in right around that $1,000 mark. And if we weren't trying to get this video out, we definitely would have taken a little extra time to maybe, maybe, oh. do, do some drywall work and paint a little better, but for a temporary bathroom. Yeah, fix the electrical, level the floor, but where do you stop? Right, <laughs> right. We're going to do all that on the stud pack. Guys. That's exactly it's right. Be the stud pack standard, but this was like the stud pack. Uh, what, substandard, I guess you could call it? Yeah, this was, it was like low budget Walmart stud pack. It was. Yeah. yeah. So that's gonna be a wrap, guys. If your like button needs a little help, now you know how to do it on the cheap and pretty fast. Smash it for us. Go ahead and ask a question, drop us a comment. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the very next stud pack video. And remember, it's temporary. temporary.